Hello again, Card Community. It's RJ back with another video. Let's get to it. Today, I want to talk about baseball and art. Um, everything in the, in the world really can be made into art by depending on how you present it. I mean, we've seen some crazy things. If you if you know your art history, there's some insane things that have made into art. But baseball, certainly through its photography and just sculptures and paintings. Uh, there have been a lot of amazing images of art captured depicting baseball. So to celebrate that, I have back here a uh, artist rendering part of the Masters and Apprentice series of Topps Gallery from 2019. This is Aaron Judge and Babe Ruth. So today's items are going to be uh, themed around baseball and art. So my random Mike Schmidt collectible of the day is this 1990 Upper Deck uh, standard base series card of Mike Schmidt. It's actually card number 20 out of the base set from 1990. Uh, artist Vernon Wells did the Mike did the early Upper Deck. Um, paintings and this one celebrated Schmidt's retirement it has a little bio if you want to pause right there you can read all the bio uh, but it's just a wonderful art card it, I mean it really is well done this picture uh, just shows Mike in a couple different poses and whatnot and it's a classic art card my random baseball collectible of the day is the 1990 Bowman lithograph inserts these were contest winners or contest entries uh, official sweepstakes rules um it's interesting the way they did this i don't believe any of these cards has a name on them you just have to guess <laughs> in a way as to who the players are and if you don't know your baseball you would have no clue who some of these guys are but there's 11 of them and they're highlighting if as i understand it some of the stars rookies uh, the feats of the day. So this is Will Clark. I think he might have been the batting leader in 89. Because this came out in 90. So there's your Will Clark card. This is Mark Davis. Mark Davis, I believe, won the Cy Young Award as a reliever for the Padres in 89. Dwight Gooden. Uh, I don't know if he won the Cy Young in 89, but here's Dwight Gooden. Bo Jackson, certainly a star of the day. Don Mattingly, certainly, certainly a star of the day. Kevin Mitchell did win the MVP in 89, I believe. Uh, Greg Olson was like rookie. He was like a hugely touted rookie. I don't think he won rookie of the year, but he was um, uh, one of the top rookie prospects of the day. Nolan Ryan, you know, still kicking it after all these years. This was before he did two more no hitters just stun everybody. Brett Saberhagen in 89, he was having another great year. Jerome Walton, star rookie of the day for the National League. And Robin Yount, who won his second MVP award, I believe in 89. So these cards are also just really, to me, the, whoever the artist is here, and I can't, if you want to take a guess at who it is, you can look there it is. You can look it up. I haven't looked it up. But these, I think, were some pretty good cards of art. So I thought that was a nice one to, to, to sh showcase as a random baseball collectible. Um, trivia question today. In the Hall of Fame is a famous picture of Babe Ruth's called shot. Um, I don't have it here in front of me. You can look it up. Um, you have to find the one in the Baseball Hall of Fame because there have been a couple done of, of Babe Ruth. The one in the Hall of Fame hangs in the art gallery of the Hall of Fame. I'm asking who was the artist who did it. It's a cheesy photo, photo or picture, I should say. Ruth's just standing at the plate, holding his bat in one hand, pointing to the outfield in the other, and he's like looking right at what would be the camera. if he would, it was to, He's smiling and grinning, and he's looking right... He's not looking at the pitch. We're not looking at anybody. Oh, but he's looking off to the side of the field, looking right at you as if you were off to the side taking a picture of him. Um, and that's the famous one, you know, called shot. 
is the name of the, of the painting. So who was the artist who did that? And if you get that correct, I'm going to send you this art piece. It is uh, an 11, eight and a half by 11. Uh, it is a appreciation night handout celebrating John Buck O'Neill of the Negro Leagues. And it's a magnificent painting of Buck O'Neill in his later years when he became very famous as a spokesperson for the old Negro Leagues. This was Appreciation Night on July 28th, 1995. I'm not even sure where this was uh, given out at. I want to say it might have been given out in like all stadiums uh, around the area. There's the paint, there's who did this painting. Portrait painted, painting by John Boyd Martin in Overland Park, Kansas. So if you can answer that Babe Ruth artist question, I will send you this print of Buck O'Neill. So, today I want to highlight some cards that I consider, you know, art. Now, cards, I don't have any vintage cards from the 1800s. That's when cards really were art. A lot of them were literally paintings. For example, I have here another hand, another big souvenir sheet. This was a copy, a piece of the Wagner card. Um, all of the T206s were paintings, lithographs, of famous photos of the day. Um, and the Honus Wagner one was no exception. This here was a Pizza Hut handout of the day. <laughs> but the whole T206 set, the T205s, all of those early cards, even back into the 1800s, um, some of the Allen and Ginter, they're amazing cards. They're amazing pieces of art. Um, then when photography came in, it was a little, you know, a little bit lackadaisical in the uh, shots you'd give on your cards, just pictures. I mean, the 82 tops is photo, they kind of colorized it. The 83 tops were all paintings, that's fair. those are great cards. Um, then it gets into the uh, 80s and the Diamond King sets, and I love the Diamond Kings to this day. So I actually have, where I might have a full set of Donruss, I have separate individual collections of just the Diamond King pictures. Because one of the things I like to tell people, it's my opinion, I'm going to use the Gary Carter one here. All right, so this here is a portrait of Gary Carter. The person who did it is Dick Perez. If you look at his name down there, it says Perez. Dick Perez is a world-renowned artist. His paintings can go for millions of dollars. You know, if you have an original or whatnot. Well, no one's going to own like an original Dick Perez, typically. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, you know, it, it's beyond the means of the average collector. But this right here, this dime card, if you will, is still a piece of art created by Dick Perez. And anybody can own these things. And we just don't look at them enough as the art they really are. And there's some fantastic players in here. You got, you know, Rod Carew, Len Barker. Len Barker, people think, well, why is Len Barker here? Len Barker pitched a no-hitter the year before this, or I should say a perfect game for the Indians. That's why he's in there. And then, uh, you know, you got your Pete Rose and your Garveys, obviously. I just thought, I'm not going to go through naming everybody here, but you guys should know who most of these people are. Um, I just thought these um, Perez steel cards are, without a doubt, some of the most beautiful cards that Donner's ever put out. And I'm so thankful that they did that, you know? And it wasn't just one year. Um, Panini owns Donner's now, and they're still doing it in their Diamond Kings thing. But it's just fun to look at them, you know? And here you get into the 86s, and it's still Dick Perez doing it. And you got your 1988 versions. They're just fantastic pieces of art. And then Upper Deck came along in 1989, and the photography on Upper Deck was just touted as through-the-roof phenomenal. 
And it was. I mean, as photography goes, it really was. But then the next year, um, Donruss decided to step up their game a little bit. Um, in 91, Donruss came out with, is it Donruss or Fleer? It's Donruss. Yeah, Donruss came out with the studio set. And I love studio because what it is, is portrait photos of the players. Now, a lot of them are just, you know, kind of posed. They're all black and white. They're kind of odd posed pictures. But every once in a while, like, look at this. <laughs> Randy Milligan looks like a bad, bad prom picture or something. Some of them, you know, there's Cal looking all you know, serious and whatnot. But Ellis Brooks, deep in thought. You know, when did Roger Clemens not never ever not look, you know, serious? A lot of them are just kind of lame poses, but every once in a while you'd find a good one. Jimmy Reese is a, is a, is a I'm not going to talk about much about Jimmy Reese, but he made it as a coach. He's a legendary player, pitcher, coach for the Orioles, or for the Angels at the time. Uh, I'm trying to find some of the better ones. Uh, check out Dave Winfield now. Here you go. Dave Winfield holding a whole bunch of balls in his hand. Um, these, you know, Jack McDowell. Now that looks a great, like a great picture because you know, Black Jack McDowell kind of thing. A serious photo like that. There's more cards that I'm going to go through here, but the card company started stepping up their game. They did studio. Well, if you know me, I was um, a couple of my videos. I've been highlighting 1983 studio collection because I kept getting more. And I got like five or six of those sets. The studio in '93 used color photos, but it was really a, a, an inc incredible set as far as I'm concerned. I just think the design of this set as art is really, really good because you have the player photo. You got kind of like the cap logo in the background. If you take a look at all these, it really is the cap, a, a close-up of the cap logo in the back. And then this great rainbow foil signature here. And on the back then, it's another headshot and some, some bio information of all these players. And it is just an incredible set of cards, as far as I'm concerned, from an art perspective. It just looks so damn good. Uh, it's not a valuable set by any stretch of the imagination. I would imagine you can get this whole set for like five bucks if you're lucky, you know, 20 bucks at the most. But the pictures are just beautiful. The layout of the card, um, people don't spend the time, I think, to look at cards and to see them for the art that they are. And you'll get that once in a while with manufacturers like, you know, Donruss who did the studio, Fleer put out their Flare product uh, for a while. Card companies are always, like I said, trying to come up with new product. That's just art. Now, sometimes they fail. Uh, I'm going to go back to 1983. In 1983, Donruss came out with a set of cards called the Hall of Fame Heroes. I don't know who they chose to get the, this to do this artwork. I don't think it was Dick Perez, but these are just bad pictures. I mean, they were just awful. Um, it's better than I can do, for sure, but I mean, this is from 1983. Uh, they were sold in individual packs. There was a Mickey Mantle puzzle that went along with it, but this is Mickey's card from the set. Uh, and it's all the Hall, it's hall of Fame greats of the, of, the, of the day, you know, from 1983 and before a lot of different Hall of Famers, Satchel Page. This, to me, while it's a, it's a great concept, it's a great idea to throw a lot of cards that are paintings, you know, a lot of a lot of paintings as the card, and it's a great concept. And I love the set as a set collector. I just don't think the artwork is particularly good. Um, it's a Hank Aaron. That's that was that's actually a nicer picture of Hank Aaron. But some of these pictures, Bob Feller. I don't. I'm not really sure about that Bob Feller picture. The Casey Stengel looks like a caricature. Um, 
there's good ones. Melot. Uh, there's that's the puzzle card. Looked like the Mickey Mantle one. And then there was a checklist. This this is an example of you know card companies every once in a while would try to get it an art thing going and it just wouldn't come out right until I think Tops did a good job when they started the gallery series. Uh, gallery is something I got really into when I got back into cards, and sadly I don't think they're doing it this year. Uh, but one of my favorite ones is the 2019 set. I think it's a very simple design. What they did, I've noticed, is that they started actually enlisting various artists to do it. It's a nice Clayton Kershaw. These are all paintings. They might be based upon photographs that were changed. Um, Juan Soto. I like this Juan Soto a lot. You know, it's got the great mirror image in the glasses there. These, to me, are really good art cards. I love this one, uh, Ramon Loria, just because it's an action shot almost. And I think these cards, like I said, are some good art. And, and you know, Tops is kind of supporting the art community these days with their project cards. The Project 70s uh, have a multiple number of artists. These are, these here have like five or six, you know, eight, nine, ten different artists. I don't know. Pete Alonzo, rookie card there. Shohei Otani. I think these cards, cards really capture the essence of the, you know, the concept of baseball cards as art in, in, a, in a great way. And again, I, the reason I'm highlighting this, the reason I'm, I'm doing this video is I want people to think about cards like I do. Because we're in a world today where what people value of these cards is their value. In other words, nobody cares about the cards themselves. Here is the great subset from, I think, from 2019, or from, from all the Topps Galleries recently, the Master and Apprentice sets. Uh, Hank Aaron and Acuna Jr. This is Vladdy and Vladdy Jr. Tony Gwynn and Manny Machado. Koufax and Kershaw. Musial and Goldschmidt. Machado and Tatis Jr. Ruth and Judge. Thomas and Jimenez. Williams and Betts. And Yelton Yelich. These cards are good art cards too. Um, what I was saying is that I don't think people take the time to appreciate cards for what they are. Little pieces of art. Now, there's good art and there's bad art. You know, to me, these are good art cards. To me, these are bad art cards. But nobody is interested in these little cards right here. Like this 1990 Bowman set. I think every the whole set could be had for a dollar. You know, you, you could find some dealer out there who's got these lying around. In fact, I bet there's some dealer, if you, have, if you walk into your LCS and he's got it laying on the counter and you're a long-time client, he'll probably just give it to you. There's no value. In it. I mean, that's fine. There is no monetary value. But, I mean, to hold a card, a baseball card, in your hand and to look at it, and to look at everything about it, even if it's like a contest card, the colors, the way it's presented, the white border around it, if it has one, the picture, the painting. This is why we should collect. This is why I collect. This is why I collect sets more so than singles, you know? Because cards are beautiful things. And... I want people to believe that as much as I do. So, this was a little uh, insight into collectibles, baseball cards as art. And I hope you see it as much as I do. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
Uh, don't forget the trivia question. I will leave a uh, repeat of the question in the description below along with my email address. Be the first person to email me the correct answer to get that Buck O'Neill print. Please don't leave any comments in the comments regarding the uh, answer to the trivia question. That kind of spoils it for other people. Uh, but definitely do enter the, the contest. I want to thank you for watching. This one went a little long. I uh, hope you agreed with me, like I said, that baseball cards are art and should be celebrated that way. Thanks for watching. Take care.